If you think we're on the run We are the boys who will stop your little game We are the boys who will make you think again Cause who do you think you are kidding Mr. Hitler If you think old England's done Mr. Brown goes off to town on the A21 But he comes home each evening and he's ready with his gun So who do you think you are kidding Mr. Hitler Ah, good evening, sir. Don't sit in my chair when I'm not here, Wilson. <laughs> Sorry, sir, I, I, I'm just writing out a notice, that's all. What you're doing is neither here nor there. You know that I don't like you sitting at my desk in my absence. I see. Well, uh, what am I supposed to lean on? <laughs> well, let's hear. You're supposed to use your initiative. Write it on your knee. All right, sir. Don't think I gave you permission to sit, did I? <laughs> Sorry, sir. You are a soldier, you know. Yes, of course, yes, yes. I am an officer. Yes, quite, sir, yes. You're supposed to be an NCO. Yes, of course, yes, yes. Right. Right. Very right, well. Right. Remember. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. You're right, sir. Here you are, you see, sir. This was a notice I was... I was writing out, do you understand? Do not lean back in this chair. <laughs> yes, sir, there was a... The phone message uh, for you. The French general is uh, definitely coming. Who says so? And the colonel. It's uh, here somewhere. Had it a moment ago. Ah, yes. Here it is, yes. Visit of the French general. Confirmed a unit of the home guard to provide a guard of honor at the town hall. Well, I sincerely hope they don't pick us. Huh? Or it's damned red tape. And they realize that we're frontline troops. Anyway, I was never very really keen on the French. Oh, uh, <laughs> They're very good soldiers, aren't they? Mm, only up to a point. Mm. They're never very much good after lunch, you know. <laughs> oh, really, weren't they? Mm. All that wine and garlic is very debilitating. <laughs> all they know how to do is chase women. Come with me to the Casbah, all that sort of thing. I suppose you might say they're rather emotional, sir. Well, again, for all that sloppy kissing, don't they? I mean, you can't even pin a medal on a chap's chest without kissing him. Yes. Well, if you were picked as guard commander, I expect you'd get one. A medal? No, a kiss. <laughs> I assure you, I wouldn't stand for any of that sort of thing. Come in. Manager. Yeah? There is a lady outside who wishes to have an audience of you. <laughs> well, when I say a lady, I don't mean she's a woman. Although, of course, she is a woman, otherwise she couldn't be a lady, which she is. Because <laughs> she rejoices under the name of Lady Maltby. Lady Maltby? Oh, and what does she want? Oh, she didn't give me any confidence about that, sir. Lords and ladies seldom do, you know. When we was in the Sudan, Lord Kitchener never gave any of us any confidence. <laughs> You'd better show her in, please. Very good. Thanks, sir. Fasten your collar up. Pull yourself oh, together. Right, sir. Right, yes. <clears throat> and when you've paid your respects to her ladyship, you can withdraw. Oh. I suppose she only wants to deal with the officers. Oh, I see. <laughs> Her ladyship, the Lady Maltby. Ah. Oh. Her ladyship, this is indeed an honour. I'm Captain Mannering. Yes, I've heard of you. This is my sergeant, who's just going. <laughs> oh, now how nice to see you. My dear Angie, you look... <laughs> my goodness me, you look absolutely marvellous. It really is good to see you after all this time. Mm -hmm. Captain Manning, she certainly got confidence in Mr. Wilson. <laughs> I think they've met previous. I seem to know your face. Oh, yes, your ladyship, yes. I've been purveying meat to your establishment since 1933, when his late lordship fell out with Sainsbury's. <laughs> You're Mr. Jones. Yeah. Well, there'll be one book extra this week. My son is coming home on leave. Oh, that's very nice. Well, I've got some nice chops or a bit of brisket. Yes, well, perhaps you'll talk that over with the cook. Yes, I'm sure we can get our heads together. Yes. You rely on me. Yeah. Sure. Oh, uh, Jones, that'll do, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, but sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> It is nice to see you again. Yes, of course it is. Well, 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 so, 
So Nigel's uh, coming home, is he? How is he? Oh, he got married, you know. He didn't, did yes. he? Really? Oh, yes, of course he did. Yes, uh, Auntie Lettuce, tell me about it. Yes, and now he's in the blues, foolish boy. <laughs> is he really? You know, I had a man, my grandfather was in the blues. He spent a lot of time in the Khyber Pass. Yes, Wilson, Wilson. I'm quite sure Lady Maltby hasn't come here to listen to your family affairs. Oh, you really must forgive us, but it's such ages since dear Arthur and I have had a chinwag together. Do it down now. Oh, thank you. Actually, I came here about my car. Oh, yes. Well, I can't get any petrol for it, and it just sits there in the garage, so I thought that somebody ought to use it towards the war effort. Then I can have it back when we've won. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of car is it, Lady Maltby? Oh, just an ordinary sort of Rolls. Rolls? Oh. <clears throat> oh. Now, the question is, who would put it to the best use, the Home Guard or the Wardens? Well, the Home Guard, definitely. Oh, I'm so glad you think that. That, Mr Hodges, is most awfully common. Oh. Yes, and, of course, I know Mr Jones and Arthur is such a darling. Oh, I'm sure you're very nice, too, when one gets to know you. <laughs> yes. Well, I can assure you we'd look after it most carefully, Lady Maltby. My men are very reliable, very particular about who I have in my platoon. They're all hand-picked. Hey, we're all lined up out here waiting, waiting, and if you don't come soon, we're all off home. I thought you'd just like to know. <laughs> Rough diamond, that one. <laughs> Half of gold. Just the chap to have on your side in a scrap. Excuse me, sir. Uh, what exactly would you do with the Rolls Royce? Well, I should use it as my staff car. Oh, I see, but it's also sort of uh, shiny and Rolls Royce, isn't it? Oh, you can camouflage it as far as I'm concerned. Oh, are you seeing? No, but I mean, a huge, great big Rolls Royce. I mean, uh, <laughs> why do you look a bit silly? How do you mean? Well, I. I suppose we could sit you on a cushion. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, Mr. Memory. Carter Patterson's horse has gone down the road, so I bought you some for your rose. <laughs> Just... A new recruit. We haven't licked him into shape yet. <laughs> well, I... Uh... Ask Glossop to drive us round on Saturday morning. That's most generous of you, Your Ladyship. Yes, you really have been an absolute brick, then. And you must pop in and have a drink one evening. Oh, I'd love to, yes. We'll ask Captain Fanshawe. <laughs> <laughs> Mannering, yes, I should be delighted, thank you. We'll ask Captain Mannering to let you off one evening. <laughs> yes. Delighted. I'll well, see you soon, I hope. Yes. Goodbye. Oh, dear. Really. She really is awfully sweet, don't you think so? Hmm? I think it's pathetic. What? <laughs> Why? What? You. Kowtowing to her just because she's got a title. Kowtowing? I wasn't kowtowing at all. Well, it cuts no ice with me. And you can tell that to your auntie Lettuce. <laughs> Where is he? Where is he? You've well, done it, haven't you, Mannering? Dare you come barging in here like that? Never mind about that. She was thinking of giving me that car, then you stuck the sherbet in and put her off me. <laughs> we haven't put her off you at all. So happens that we know her very well socially. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Me and my lads is providing half the guard of honour for the French general. And I just hope you're not providing the other half, because I don't want to be stuck opposite your ugly mug. If you're going to be there, I shall refuse to parade. Just you watch it, mate. And from now on, mind your step. Because if I see one chink of light from this hall, or if you shine a torch, or if you leave as much as a bicycle without immobilising it, I'll have you. I haven't got a bicycle. Then you better immobilise your crutches. <laughs> Dear, dear. He really is the most appalling fellow, isn't he? Well, what do you expect? He's no business to be chief warden at all. Man's a greengrocer. Yeah. <laughs> so is Lord Maltby. Really? Really? Yes. Are you in a big way of business, I suppose? Yes, you see, it's not what you know or who you know. It's uh, how much of it you have. <laughs> Now, let's have any bullshit talk like that here. Not at all. <laughs> Go and fall the men in. All right, sir. All right, uh, how are you, Charles? Fall in, will you please? Right. Three nice, tidy little rows. Come on. Do as you can. <coughs> squat, squat, shut. <laughs> Stand at ease. <laughs> now, I'm very proud to announce 
that we have an addition to our battle fleet. And it's a Rolls-Royce staff car. Can I drive it, Mr. Manreen? <laughs> Certainly not. Well, back's our first ride, didn't it, then? Be quiet, Mike. Rolls Royce is going to be very comfortable, you know, sir. I went to a wedding once, and uh, you were given instructions to the driver through a speaking tube. Uh, I didn't, of course. It, it wasn't my car. No, all right, that'll do. <laughs> a very reliable, too, sir. General Kitchen had one in the 1914 war, and General French, he had one as well as also. When I say General French, I, I don't mean he's a French general. I mean General French, who was an English general. <laughs> a lot of people get confused about that, you know. <laughs> Not that it matters, because I wasn't talking about him anyway. <laughs> the man I was talking about was General Kitchener, yeah, and he, he was getting a bit worried about recruiting, you see, sir, because he was, a lot of men was getting killed and he thought he was going to run out of them. Anyway, he was getting into his Rolls Royce one day when he noticed that the dashboard was all mingy. And he turned to his driver and he says, My man, why is my dashboard all mingy? <laughs> the driver replied, the driver, well, you see, it's this foreign mahogany. It's no good in these parts. We need old English wood. We need you. That's it, said the general. That's the slogan what I've been looking for. Your country needs you. <laughs> Not many people know this story, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Jones. <laughs> he never run out of men after that, so no matter how many you do. <laughs> now, the turn, turn! Right, stand your men at ease, Captain Mannering. Stand at ease! I think you'd be interested to know that you've been selected to provide the guard of honour outside the town hall for the visit of the French general. An honour indeed, sir. Now, you see, the reward for being smart. Yes, indeed. Another hour's cleaning and blanco in. Check that Welshman's name, Wilson. <laughs> You've also been chosen because of the person who has to make the speech before the General's departure. Oh, yes, of course. It has to be in French. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> well, I, uh, I suppose I could practice. Well, your sergeant speaks French. He's the obvious choice. I wouldn't have thought it was all that obvious. But, uh, <laughs> do you speak French, Wilson? Well, what you might call, um, the petit peu. What? <laughs> I'm very much against these parades. They take us away from valuable training time. I'm sorry, I've been asked by area to make this as smart an occasion as possible. It can hardly be very smart with those wardens sprawling all over the steps. <laughs> yes, that's quite right, sir. We should provide the whole guard comprehensively. Well, certainly the presence of the wardens will make it a bit of a shambles. Very well, I'll have a word with the town clerk and the mayor. Your platoon will provide the whole guard of honour. Thank you very much, sir. And Uncle Arthur will make the French speech. <laughs> Mon General. Mon General, nous autres, à Warmington on sea, nous sommes. Uh, answer that, Frank, would you please? Yes. Nous sommes. Hello, here. home guard. Oh, morning. It's Glossop here, Lady Mort with chauffeur. Oh, hello, Mr. Glossop. I'm on my way to the paint shop to get Lady Mort with Rolls camouflage for Captain Mannerin. And I'm afraid I've run out of petrol. Oh, dear. Well, where are you? Outside of town hall. Well, look, you stay there and we'll come along and give you a push, all right? All right, then. Right, so. Bye bye. Too long, Uncle Arthur. Huh? Come on. Captain Manning's Rolls Royce is stuck outside the town hall. We're going to go along and give you a push. Oh, what, what are you talking about, Frank? You can't push a great big thing like that. Well, of course you can. You're ever so muscular. <laughs> Mum's always saying so. Yeah, but it's enormous. <laughs> If I get some petrol, could I drive it? No, you couldn't possibly. No, the, the, the chauffeur would never allow you to. You could make him? What? You could commandeer it. It's ours no, anyway. No, 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 Frank, don't, don't be silly. No, just, just ring back and say we can't do anything. I can't. Hmm? I haven't got the number. Now, come on, come on. What, what, what about Captain Mannering? Don't worry. I've left him a note. Now, come on, come on, quick, Charles. Oh, Frank, for heaven's sake, Frank. <laughs> Why do you have to do everything in such a hurry, for goodness sake? No, Frank. Frank, come back here for a moment, will you? Uncle Arthur? What? 
It's Mr. Rogers' bike. We'll be pedaling there. Oh, no, Frank, don't be silly. You can't do that. I mean, there'd be stealing. No, it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And you could commandeer it. What? Anyway, it's only Mr. Rogers. Look. The tin here. Now, look, uh, just, just a minute, Frank. How are you going to get it from there into that? Hmm? You are silly, Uncle Arthur. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Well, we pour it in, don't we? Ah. <laughs> oh, please, Oh, I did. All right. Come on, come in, come on. Yes, sir. He's not in here, son. Yes, sir. I saw him go down the road with Pike with a sort of furtive look on his face. Oh, they've left a note, sir. What's it say? Rolls broken down by town hall, gone to help. I see what possible help he can give them. Anyway. It should be at the paint shop for camouflaging. Look, Jones, take your van and a length of rope, go to the town hall and tow them to the paint shop. Right. All right? Right. Come on, Jones. Right. Oh, I'll come too. You never know, there might be a story. You know, traffic chaos in Warmington, vital supplies delayed. Man, have you no regard for the truth? Don't insult the press, Scotch boy. Oh, vital supplies will be delayed. Jones here will be late with his deliveries. Oh, oh. <laughs> there we are. That's the last drop. Now can I drive it? Oh, don't be silly, Frank. <laughs> can I ride in the back, then? What? All right, get in. I'm sure Dross will drive us around to the paint shop. Glad you've come. What's the matter, Claude? Mace isn't fit to be seen, and Roger can't clean it because he's laid up with his old trouble. But what do you expect me to do about it? Well, Sam here can give it a rub over. Come on, Sam, look what I've left. Well, this should have been done ages. Yes, <laughs> Come on, lads. Get the rope out. We'll tie it on the front axle, we'll tie it round the paint shop. <laughs> How much is man not in paying for this camouflage and job? About eight pounds, I think. I have a spray gun back at my workshop. We'll use it for touching up the hairs. <laughs> I'll do it for seven pounds. After all, it's only dirty old brown and green paint. Oh, I don't think Mr. Manning would like that. And we're saving money, man. And it's platoon funds. Well, all right, Jock. <laughs> hey, Jones the Butcher. It's all attached and ready to go. Yes, indeed. Right, Spongy, you steer the other one. <laughs> no sign of them yet, sir? I can't think what's happened to them. They've been gone for over two hours now. And I wanted to give them a final briefing on the French General's Parade. All right, keep keep looking out, Sir Godfrey. Uh, I'm getting rather chilled, sir. Uh, one loses heat, you know. One stands around doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, jump up and down a bit. <laughs> You've gone too far this time, Napoleon. Your ruligans have pinched my petrol. <laughs> I don't believe that for a moment. Oh, yes, they have. And they didn't even siphon it. They poured it out like my bike was a ruddy teapot. <laughs> and left it on its side. My men don't do that sort of thing. Well, what's this then? Petrol requisition F Pike. <laughs> That's not how you spell requisition. <laughs> that proves it then. And another thing. You needn't think you're getting me off that parade because I'm going to appeal to the Home Secretary. Herbie Morrison will sort you out, mate. <laughs> We got it, Mr. Van We got it, right, Mr. Frank. Frank. Heaven's sake, Frank, don't get so excited. The paint shop did it right away, and I rode in the back and I waved right. to everybody like I was a friend. <laughs> you don't mind about that. What are you going to do about this? Oh, I can't stand here arguing with you. I'm going to inspect my new staff car. Oh, I've had enough oh, of you. Don't push it. Don't push Look at that, Wilson. Yeah. You shouldn't have it by rights. She'd have given it to me if you hadn't shoved your oar in. Magnificent, isn't it, Wilson? Yes. Look at that craftsmanship. Eh? British throughout. 
Show me the French car that could match that. Yeah, or a Yankee one. As indeed you say, Pike, or a Yankee one. I must say it looks awfully good as a staff car. I'll say it looks good. I'll bet there isn't another one like this in the whole of the British Isles. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, Mr. Fraser. He got another one. <laughs> Typical mannering. One on and one in the wash. <laughs> where did you get that car, Wilson? Outside the town hall with Andrew the chauffeur. Then where did that one come from, Jones? Uh, Captain Manning, I, yeah. I, I'm sorry to bother you, but the town clerk is on the telephone. Uh, he wants to speak to you rather urgently. It seems the mayor has lost his Rolls Royce. <laughs> I'm glad that. Do you think the mayor's going to be cross with Mr. Manring for putting dirty brown paint all over his Rolls Royce? Well, it's like this, Mr. Manring. I think it's been stolen. And I'm in a bit of a flummox to know what's right to do about it. Have you informed the police? Uh, no, I, I didn't think that was wise. Quite right. You see, I was the one who left the window open and took the chauffeur away. <laughs> So I'm responsible that it wasn't immobilised. Um, well, I mean, you've got to immobilise them, haven't you? I mean, you can get three months for not doing that. So, uh, I, I just assumed the police didn't get word of it. <laughs> uh, and I thought, as soon as how you've got a lot of men, you might send them out to look for it. And like as not, they might come across it. Yes, yes, I think I might be able to help you that way. Oh, ta, thanks very much, Mr. Mannering. Uh, is there anyone else I ought to inform? No, 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 no. leave this entirely in my hands. Uh, you'll have to look sharp. That car's got to be outside the town hall for three o'clock for the French general. Never fear, it'll be there on time. All the blundering idiots, Wilson. Well, it's nothing to do with me, sir. I didn't touch the mayor's car. If you hadn't taken Lady Maltby's without my permission... Yeah, and with my petrol... You'd be quiet. Oh, Pikey, <laughs> if I could get a photograph of the mayor's face when he sees his lovely, shiny black Rolls Royce covered in dirty brown paint, I could have it in every paper in the country. <laughs> hey, Jock, can you spray it black again? What time is it? At 12 o'clock. Three hours. I could try. Good man, Fraser. For ten pounds. Have it outside the town. <laughs> With any luck, nobody will be any the wiser. Oh, yes, they will, because I'm going to split. Sneak. You can call me what you like, mate, but unless you let me and my lads parade on those town hall steps, I'm going to tell the mayor what you've done with his motor. Well, General Kitchener used to say, he's got us by the fuzzy wuzzies. <laughs> yes. Very well, Hodges. You can come on the parade. When General Kitchener used that expression, that's because them fuzzy buzzies, they got short curly hair, you see. So when he said we got them by the fuzzy buzzies, he meant that they got them by the... Yes, 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 all right. <laughs> There's no need to be like that, sir. I'm only trying to make the war a bit more cheerful. I, I'm sorry about this, Captain Ming Warren, but I can't get the flash bulbs, you know. There's not one to be had in the town. Right. Don't be too obtrusive. Right, old boy. Right, old. You're not going to say all that, are you? Well, there's quite a lot of it scratched out, you see. I, I changed my mind quite a lot, you know. Yes, well, keep it short. Otherwise, it'll be very boring. But on the other hand, if the car hasn't arrived, I might have to keep it going just a bit longer. Oh, see. Captain Ming Warren. I'll take one of you and the general, like you said. Yes, good, 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 good man. Right, old boy. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Fraser's cutting it a bit uh, fine, isn't he? Uh, now, there he is, coming round the corner. Now, look. By Jove. What a magnificent job he's made of it. Here. I just want you to know that when you bore and shout instructions of attention and present arms, my lads won't take the slightest bit of notice. You'll turn the parade into a complete shambles. All right, then. I'll ball out attention and present arms, and your lads can take notice of me. Certainly not. Um, Captain Barry, do you want the bugler to play before the salute or during the salute? He's to play all the time I'm in the present, and then the choir will sing the Marseillaise. Is that quite clear, Mr. Yateman? You give me the nod, Your Reverence, and I'll tip him the wig. He's coming down the back passage now. Right. Places, everybody. Well, I'll probably leave. 
Everything all right, Fraser? Uh, fine, sir. Uh, just for one thing... Yes, but tell me afterwards. But <laughs> it'll be as well for you to listen, sir. He's coming. Fall in. Everything go all right, Mr Fraser? Fine. There's just one thing. I couldn't get any quick drying paint. It's not that easy. <laughs> oh, it's not tacky. Good. Just plain wet. <laughs> Here it comes. Sit! Hut! Woolen! Hut! Shut up. <laughs> Give the nod. It was his fault. Wait till I give you the word. Warden <laughs> B Company. Not the wardens. <laughs> Slow! Hey! Please it! Hey! Warm it down to see wardens. Brilliant! Hut! Come to the cookhouse door. He doesn't know the last post. <laughs> Look at him, the man's blubbing. <laughs> very, very sad, Mr. Manring. <laughs> there just wasn't time to learn the rest. <laughs> Only little boys, you know. <laughs> Number one to B Company. Not the wardens. <laughs> Slow arms. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Wilson. Wilson. Monsieur General. Who's out? Ah, uh, woman did not see. What did he say, Mr. Manrin? Oh, the usual trite rubbish. <laughs> no, you've got to hand it to Uncle Arthur. It's just like Mum says. He can do anything if he gets the urge. France. Bien aimé. Mes amis, mes chers camarades d'armes, Je ne puis pas parler. Mon cœur déborde. Mais merci. <laughs> Hang on a minute, didn't I get a kiss? I'm going. <laughs>